author Jilly Cooper has written numerous best-selling books, but is she queen of the bonkbuster or the Jane Austen of our times? Who better to tell us than journalist Kat Brown, who is such a fan that she set up a book club devoted to the theme. Along the way, she found new friendships and had what in Jilly Cooper land would generally be known as riotous fun. But first things first, just what is it about Jilly Cooper that inspires such devotion? She is just such a wonderful writer. And I love the fact that you could instantly remember some of her books, even though you might not have read her for absolutely years. In the 70s, her books would be plastered with the most amazing quote from Harper's, which called her the Jane Austen of our time. And that is why we are so drawn to Jilly Cooper's writing, because she writes people, women and especially men, better than pretty much any author I know. And sex. Oh, yes. There are huge adventurous sex lives in these books and everybody really, really enjoys themselves. There are a few characters for whom guilt about sex or just not feeling very into it is really a part of their character. But then as soon as they find the right person or they find the right scenario, you know, they're happy as clams or really, to use a Gilliism, joyous as otters. So tell us about the book club. What led you to start your Jilly Cooper book club? I met a girl on Twitter who turned out to be a mutual friend and we discovered that we both adored Jilly Cooper and we went out for dinner at Brasserie Zadell and both bought along a friend each who were sort of fellow Jillyites and we all got utterly plastered and thought this would be the greatest thing ever and then I think we put a post about it on Twitter and we ended up at Venateca in King's Cross eating gull's eggs as Taggy Campbell Black would hugely approve of and drinking vast quantities of wine and actually having no book discussion whatsoever because everybody was so thrilled to be surrounded by other people that just love Jilly Cooper. The book club's now been going for, this is coming up to its third year, so obviously we've been through certainly the big bonk busters quite a few times and we've gone out to the non-fiction and the smaller romances. But what I find completely compelling about this book club, because I have been in some others, is because everybody knows these books so well, we all started reading them at that particular point in life in your teens when books start really becoming a part of your identity and your personality and mean so much more we can actually get into really deep analytical almost you know postdoctoral study about each of these books there's poetry there's clothing there's social study and there are bloody good plots i suppose because these books are so joyful and funny and witty and filled with great jokes It's joie de vivre, basically, and, you know, we need all that we can get of that in current times. Sometimes perhaps people, probably actually people maybe who aren't so familiar with her writing might be a bit dismissive of her. But as you mentioned earlier, you know, they are chock full of literary references. I love the fact that characters are constantly quoting poetry at one another. (laughs) I suppose the comparison that I will make, and this will probably sound mad, is that there is a a hashtag on Instagram at the moment called I Think War and Peace 18. And a books blogger started this because she'd never read War and Peace. She'd always been really put off it. And now she and a bunch of other people have gone, yeah, okay, this year I'm going to read War and Peace and I'll document it. And I basically feel about War and Peace, how a lot of people feel about Jilly Cooper. I'm looking at it going, my God, that's a big book. Oh my God, there's just so many people. How do you keep track of all the people? And don't they all basically have the same name? Aren't they essentially like the same Sloan with a different hairstyle, but in Russia? The thing is, is, you can't sort of force people to read a book, which is why it's so lovely having our book group, which seems to get bigger with every passing year. We've got loads of people, some of whom have only come once or twice or, you know, live miles away. We've got people who live in Egypt and America who still chime in on Facebook and on WhatsApp and everything and give their contributions and come to meetings when they're over. But I think it's just knowing that there is that community of people that is as madly keen on Jilly Cooper as you are and wants to talk about it incessantly. There is an argument to say that reading them as a contemporary feminist can be slightly challenging, depending on how strong your views are, I suppose. How do you feel about that? You know, in some ways, they're quite unreconstructed. Whilst Jilly, I think, is not very keen on the kind of feminism that may have been quite prevalent then, in the terms of feminism with women being equal, there are a shed load of those. You've got the ghastly Janie, or wonderful Janie, depending on which side of the books you're on, who's a Fleet Street journalist who's incredibly hardworking, hardcore, massively well paid. Again, the books are filled with people who actually may not have existed so much in real life, but 
are given a huge opportunity to be wildly successful in the books and in, in different fields and in careers whilst happening to be women at the same time. And I love the fact that all of her characters, no matter what their sexual proclivities, no matter which way they swing, no matter what gender they are, are all fully rounded people. I think as a teenager, these books were incredibly important for me to read because I didn't know who I was. All I knew was that I didn't want to live in the middle of Hampshire for the rest of my life and I wanted to achieve something, but I didn't know how to do it. And, for example, Polo, as mentioned earlier, Perdita knows from the off that she wants to be the greatest polo player of all time and she's going to do her damnedest to achieve that. Rupert Campbell Black knows that he's going to be the best show jumper of all time and then when he turns his mind to politics he's going to be the best minister that he can possibly be. And reading books that are filled with these people who are so assured is incredibly inspiring. If you were to recommend just one Jilly Cooper book to a book club which one would you go for? Oh, so my favourite, and I'm pleased that I can tell everybody because I found this out in November, my favourite and Jilly's favourite is Rivals, which is an amazing, amazing, amazing book. Rollicking, I believe, is the official term when you're regarding uh, women's fiction about the world of TV consortiums. It features incredibly intricate female characters. It's got a wonderful love story of how Rupert ends up meeting and falling in love with his wife. Well, sorry, his second wife. Rupert only has two wives, but it sort of feels like he's had about a million because he's slept with so many people. And it's just joyous. But if you want something smaller than one of the romances, which are all named things like Harriet, Octavia, Bella and Emily, and they're all absolutely glorious but my favourite one is Harriet. I recommend the really old Corgi editions because Jilly was actually the model for each of the characters on the front and it is just lovely. I think those are fantastic intros to her world. And are you open to new members? How can people find out about you? Yes, we've got a Facebook group. We use the Jilly Book Club hashtag on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, People are always welcome if they want to drop me a line on Twitter or something. What this book club has become is a huge support network for us all. We're quite open about talking about all sorts of things. Even people who joined relatively recently, I now consider to be among some of my dearest friends. And that sounds so odd, but I think it's like developing these huge, thumping great crushes on people and creating these new, wonderful relationships with women. And that is something that we all come back to so much, is that it can be quite difficult to make new friendships when you're in your 30s or 40s, because, you know, your groups are all quite set. And yet here we are with this whole new bunch of completely mad, wonderful, glorious friends. And in your life as a journalist, have you ever actually encountered Jilly in person? I've only encountered her once through being a journalist, although I will say every journalist on Fleet Street who's ever interviewed her has the warmest stories. We've, as a book group, have had quite a lot of letters from her. She gave me a phone call the other day, which was lovely. These were things that we never expected and that these have all become a lovely side result of why we started doing this in the first place which was because we love the books we love the world and we wanted to read about it much more and the fact that Jilly finds pleasure or happiness in the fact that a load of insane fangirls male and female want to talk about her a lot is just wonderful well I think it sounds brilliant Kat thanks so much for telling me about the Jilly Cooper book club thank you (laughs) have you ever read any Jilly Cooper I have. I went on holiday one year with my parents when I was probably about 14 or 15. And I'm pretty sure I read Polo. Oh. You know, the the jet. I guess so. I I don't even remember her name, but I do remember the jet setting lifestyle and traveling around all these different shows and the romance. I don't remember the sex, actually. (laughs) I know, I know. I would have thought that kind of was uh, made a real impression. But I remember the glamour. And that's what's so interesting about Kat bringing that up as, you know, reading these books in Hampshire as a teenager and kind of expanding your world and making you realize you want more that resonates I think with Polo but also with other books you read when you're a teen yeah I think it is that thing about those books that you encounter in those impressionable years that stay with you and I think certainly that explains to some degree the sheer love and affection (laughs) people have you know even while acknowledging that you know it might not be the finest most crafted works of literature that you can read but there's something wonderful about them nonetheless and they're to be cherished, I think. I want to read Rivals now. To be fair, I think I should just read them all, really. It sounds like it's a, a cultural institution. I just loved Kat's enthusiasm. Yeah. Um, I do think that book clubs are brilliant for 
getting like you can have such superficial discussions with people on a day-to-day -day basis but then somehow talking about fiction sometimes non-fiction you just get into the real grit of life yeah i think book clubs is a way of sustaining friendships and also exploring new ones that is actually one of their key pleasures and delights i see my book club members book club friends they are friends way more often than i see my friends otherwise because it's scheduled yeah, like i've got exactly. to see them every four to six weeks exactly it's that thing where you make that date you're going to keep that date in the diary because it's book club and actually as life gets busy and we all just get kind of pulled in a hundred different directions, it's a really nice way of <laughs> making sure you keep in touch with people. I think it's also nice to deep dive into a specific author's uh, oeuvre, to be pretentious. Um, <laughs> but, oof. you know, it's it's like, you know, it's the same as the Proust book club, really. I mean, just people who are very enthusiastic about an author and getting together to talk about it. Yes, you're right. I hadn't made that parallel, <laughs> but you're right. Exactly the same thing. Proust and Jilly Cooper. <laughs> 